waiting with the right motivation. The main factor in waiting with the right motivation is the realization that Christ is already reigning as King of the universe. In addition, he will remain reigning forever. From now on until eternity, there will never be a time when Christ is not on the throne of the universe. In the first chapter of Ephesians, Paul is opening the eyes of Christians to the tremendous, immeasurable power of God. In verse 19, he states that God's incomparably great power is for us who believe. Then, he gives us the standard to measure the power of God available to us as believers in our lives. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places? Ephesians 1, 19 through 20. The same power which raised the dead body of Jesus from the tomb and exalted him into the highest place in heaven is available to us as believers. Paul then shows the degree of authority to which God has raised Jesus, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Ephesians 1, 20 through 21. Christ is far above all other forms of rule or authority or power in the whole universe. He is not merely above them. He is far above them. He is above all rulers on the natural human plane kings, presidents, dictators, or whatever other titles they may have. One of his titles is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. I interpret that this way. He is the ruler of all rulers and the governor over all governors. He is also above all spiritual rulers and authorities in the unseen realm. The Bible reveals that certain unseen powers in the spiritual realm are evil and under Satan's control. In many places, the New Testament speaks of principalities and powers or rulers and authorities with reference to the kind of power and authority Satan would seek to exercise against God's people and God's purposes. Though these are real and we have to reckon with them, we must continually bear in mind that the power and authority bestowed by God upon Jesus is on a far higher level. He is above all. Paul gives us this good news, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Ephesians 1.22 Those last three words are tremendously important for the church. Jesus is seated in heaven on our account to represent us, to watch over us, to ensure that God's purposes and promises for us are worked out unfailingly. No human or satanic opposition or hindrance can ever frustrate the promises and the purposes of God on our behalf. Jesus is the head over everything for his church. How important to realize that! The church is the primary object of his care and concern. All his power and all his authority are exercised on our behalf. Furthermore, not only is he seated in heaven, but he is going to remain there from now on and forever. Speaking about Jesus reigning, the Bible says, For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. 1 Corinthians 15, 25 Some people who are preoccupied with the Antichrist and the Great Tribulation actually believe there will be a gap somewhere in the future in human history when Jesus will no longer be reigning. That is not true. He is reigning now, and he will continue to reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. No matter what happens on earth, Jesus is never going to abdicate that throne to which the Father has raised him. And that is not all. Jesus has not only been exalted by the Father over all forms of authority and power, but the revelation of Scripture takes us one important step further. Christ shares his authority with his people. This concept is illustrated by Paul. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, 
even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, 4-7 In these verses, Paul lays down three objective historical facts based on our relationship through faith with Jesus Christ and our identification with Him. Because we have committed our lives to Jesus and made ourselves one with Him by faith, we are identified in everything God has done for Him from His crucifixion onwards. Paul specifies three actions God took for Christ that He has also done for us who are in Christ. In verse 5, Paul says, God made us alive with Christ. In verse 6, Paul says, God raised us up, resurrected us with Christ. Then he goes on to say in the same verse that, God seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Jesus Christ. New International Version. God has identified us with Christ in these three respects. He has made us alive with Christ. He has raised us up with Christ, resurrected us, and He has seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Jesus is seated on a throne, and when we are seated with Him, we are enthroned with Him. Where He is, we are. Just as He is seated far above all authority and power, we are seated with Him far above all authority and power. Just as He rules, we rule with Him, not in the future, but now. The same truth about the sharing of the throne with Christ is confirmed by Paul in Romans. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Romans 5.17 When we are identified with Jesus Christ, we reign with Him in life. Just as He reigns, we reign with Him. Just as He is on the throne, we share the throne with Him. This is important for us to realize as we go into the future. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your good plan and purpose for my life. You called me out of darkness into your marvelous light and placed me in a path where all things work together for the good of those that love you and are called according to your purpose. Open my eyes, dear Lord, to see and embrace the revelations in your word that will keep me focused today and all the days of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring the right people and associations you've ordained for me to have that will help me and increase my chances of finishing strong in you in all that I do. Remove everyone that has become a source of distraction from my path of life. Lord, grant me wisdom on how to maximize the productive relationships you've given me the privilege to have. Also, give me the wisdom to manage those that are not supposed to be on my path as I move deeper into your plans and purpose for me. In Philippians 3, verse 14, Paul said that he pressed towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. In the same way I receive grace by your Spirit to press towards the mark of the high calling in God. To look away from all that aims to take my eyes off the ball and to constantly look to you and your purposes for my life alone. I have chosen to press by your Spirit. I forget those things that are behind me and reach out to the greatness ahead of me. I stretch by your power to reach my goal in you today in Jesus' name. Nothing can break my focus and nothing can sway my eyes from the dreams you have put in my heart. Thank you, Lord, because I know that as I focus and on your plan and purpose for me, I will be changed from glory to glory by your Spirit.